super close friends. So Jerry's been obsessively and compulsively working on uh, cataloging. Well, it's a very scholarly approach. Mike, tell us a gem of wisdom you wish you would have possessed in your early collecting career. You know, it's a lot of, it's, that's a question that's sort of like, oh, if I could go back and mm -hmm. knowing what I know now and be a 10 year old again or something, yes. Uh, yes. or a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Or, <laughs> uh, I think you just have to follow your intuition, your desire, and your, and uh, what speaks to you, I think we all collect. So I can't, I can't offer. I don't think there's a, a quick start. Okay. Talk to people and uh, make friends with your local curatorial staff and and uh, study and don't be afraid to. I, I collect exclusively based on uh, image and my attraction to image, really. Uh, so follow your heart. Be brave. And uh, and uh, 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 and don't let it get too dangerously <laughs> carried away. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Let's go to Jane next. Jane Ortiz. Oh, well, we skip someone. Oh, sure. We can <laughs> skip around. So. Well, that's kind of fun because actually, Mike and I took a class at Anderson Ranch together. Oh, I don't know. Ninety-eight. Wasn't oh good <laughs> well anyway it was just really fun and uh, this was a Japanese woodcut uh, and class and so, well it was monotype silk screen is what it was with this kind of interesting and it was just kind of fun to see that and that was kind of really when I started having the extra money to be able to collect and stuff like that. My very beginning of collecting started by trading with people in college and then trading with people at Hallmark. Uh, and there was no real rhyme or reason to do my collecting, but it was predominantly contemporary art, because that's what most of the people I knew were making at the time. Uh, a little bit later in life, quite a bit later in life, I decided to go back to graduate school, which was one of the best things I ever did in my life. And I was going to go back as a painter. And this was at UMKC, and I realized what a real gift uh, Craig Suppler was to Kansas City. And so I switched over to printmaking, which I had had quite a bit of experiment experience not only at KU, but at Hallmark and printmaking. They opened up a, an experimental uh, silkscreen department at KU, and for some reason or other I got asked to be there. Gosh, it was so much fun. We had a printer who made our screens for us. It was just really a neat experience. So uh, printmaking was the right thing for me to go into. And um, just some of the places that I've collected, I mean, I, one of the joys of going back to graduate school was having to, having to take art history classes. And gosh, that was the neatest thing ever, just to be able to study artists and enjoy their work, understand why certain works were being done at a certain time in history, and um, then also to realize that we come into an era where there isn't a, a real trend. I mean, everyone's doing all sorts of different sorts of art, and so it's really, it's really fun to collect these days. One of the places that I found that was really a nice place to collect prints is uh, at the Met in New York City. They have a wonderful shop and they have big names that are affordable, which was really delightful to run into. Um, let's see, do I have a subject matter for my work? Heavens no. <laughs> it's everywhere. So I guess I'm really not an experienced collector, nor do I particularly want to be. And by the way, you might notice that I am the token 
Well, <laughs> the first choice of Potomac Times, <laughs> but I'm glad to be here, it's really fun. And, <laughs> and do you have a gem that now occurs to you as you look back at your buying history that you wish you would have known in the beginning? Gosh, I haven't gotten that far yet. Okay, <laughs> okay perfect. No, I, I think I've just enjoyed having art around me. I really have fun playing with where to hang it and things like that. Uh, I have a little bit of a decorator influence somehow or other. But like for you to not call yourself a collector, Jane, I mean, they, all we have to do is walk in your house and you do some amazing collections. So thank you for being here. Yeah, glad you John, yes. you're next. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, my uh, interest in collecting prints, um, I had no art experience, no art knowledge. Um, I did take a photography class in college. My professor was a, a painter who had a lot of works in, in galleries in New York City. Um, and mostly my interest in art was so I could look sophisticated and impress girls. Um, so, it worked. Uh, <laughs> it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. I'm on my second marriage. Um, so, um, back in October of 2011, um, I've been living in Kansas City for about 25 years and, and really said it's about time I started to get to know my city. And so um, I picked the Nelson as a place to start. And there was a painting in the Nelson um, called Juggler by Walt Kuhn, an American painter. And it just fascinated me um, as I looked at the, the painting, uh, the, the model appeared to be an actual juggler. I could tell by the way he was holding the balls. Um, and I said, who is, this, who is this person? Who is this artist? And so then I went and bought as many books and read as much material on Walt Kuhn. And one night, um, with a bottle of wine next to me and a computer mouse in my hand, um, yeah, that's not a good combination. <laughs> that's, that's my gem of wisdom, keep the alcohol away from the computer. <laughs> but um, I actually, with a credit card. With a credit card. <laughs> I actually found for sale a Walt Kuhn lithograph that um, uh, was wonderful. And it was a nude, which uh, also intrigued me. And, um, I purchased that print, and from there I started studying regional artists. I figured, go, let's go closer to home, study uh, John Stuart Curry, Thomas Hart Patton, Grant Wood, um, and then I was off to the races. Um, in 18 months of doing this, I've amassed uh, about 30 prints. Um, my daughter will not be able to go to college. <laughs> so, um, I do get um, very passionate about things prior to prints and print collecting. Um, it was orchids. Um, a good thing about prints is they don't die. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I think it's a fade away. <laughs> it's a fade away. And uh, I, I think uh, the exciting thing for me is it's not just about collecting prints, it's understanding printmaking technique, uh, meeting artists, um, the art history, the culture, and historical significance of certain works and certain artists. Um, so I've told some people upstairs that I, that I liken this experience to a never ending onion. Um, you, you peel back a layer and there's yet another layer and you peel back and it just keeps going and there's always more to learn, there's more people to meet, um, more techniques to learn and understand and so it's really been a, a fascinating experience and, um, and that's kind of what got me here. So do you have any gems in 18 months time? Well, you know, it's, it's stay away from the alcohol and the computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I think um, I was initially intimidated. Um, the Spencer Reference Library at the Nelson, I would actually stand at the door and not walk in because I, I didn't feel I was worthy. Um, and, and, I, and I think um, it's, you don't have the snobbery associated with art that many people think is there. Um, I haven't seen any social snobbery where high wealth individuals with larger collections and more significant pieces have talked down to me. I haven't seen any of that, and I haven't seen any artists. I mean, I'm into realism. I try and understand and get into like abstract works. It just doesn't do it for me. But even abstract artists um, and, and people with uh, graduate degrees have been very uh, willing to share information, share their experiences. Uh, and I think that's probably um, my gem of wisdom is don't be intimidated. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing to be intimidated about. You can buy prints for as little as $50 that are actually fun to have and hang on the wall, and you can spend as absolutely as much money as you could possibly want on the other end of, end of the spectrum. So um, I think that's my, my gem of wisdom. Don't be intimidated. Great gem. Great gem. Steve. 